Good evening and welcome to the Business Day. I'm Javon Keyes. Of course, we have more activities from the earthquake. Now, business activities, especially on the eastern side of the island, were disrupted by the 5.6 magnitude earthquake experienced today. Now, a number of businesses closed early as their services were interrupted, especially because of the electricity and telecommunication service disruptions. Now, both Digicel and Flow reported a surge in calls when the tremor took place. Head of communication at Digicel, Elon Parkinson, says the company is still assessing damage to its network. Work. The majority of our customers were able to connect and to reach their loved ones and to reassure them. Right now, our network teams are looking at issues concerning off-island connectivity as well as on-island connectivity where major distribution cables are concerned. We are detecting some damage and we're working through those challenges with our engineers locally and overseas. At the same time, we do have a few cell sites that are running on generator and battery power as a result of a loss of the public power supply to those sites. We're working through that challenge as well, and we want to reassure our customers of 100% uptime for as long as we possibly can. Meanwhile, Director of Communications at Flow, Keon Mitchell, says that the company had 97% of its fixed and mobile services connected. On our fixed network, less than 3% of our customer base experienced a disruption in service. And this was primarily due to the loss of commercial power at some of our facilities. Several of our sites are currently running on generator or battery power, but others, particularly those impacted by theft and vandalism, are down until commercial power is restored. We also had some subsea fiber breaks off island due to the earthquake but our redundant routes have adequate capacity to manage the traffic into and out of the island. Now let's head to the light and power company, the Jamaica Public Service, JPS. It says it has restored power supply to all customers who are affected by outages caused by this morning's quake. The company says approximately 132,000 customers in Kingston and St. Andrew, St. Catherine, Manchester and St. James were affected by outages. JPS's independent power producers, West Kingston Power Plant, that's WKPP, and Jamaica Private Power Company, JPPC, in Rockfort and Hunts Bay, they were also affected. The company the company says it is continuing its assessment of the overall damage to its infrastructure. And the president of the private sector organization of Jamaica PSOJ, Metro Siaga, says the electricity and connectivity disruption forced a number of his members to close early. There has been some damage, some material damage, but nothing that um, can't be repaired or replaced. We have not heard of any injuries at this point or any deaths, which is wonderful news. Um, I think it gives an opportunity for a lot of our members to um, revamp their evacuation plans and put people at a place of readiness now going forward. And of course, our banks were also impacted and the National Commercial Bank and CB Jamaica said clients had difficulty reaching its customer care via its toll-free number and live chat on its website. The company, however, sent an update and it said that the service has now been restored. The bank also closed its Nutsford Boulevard location in Kingston and Port Antonio location in Portland at 1.30 today. It also closed its Constant Spring and Duke Street branches early. Now, for Scotia Bank, it reported that it didn't see any major issues as it relates to its network. However, it closed branches in St. Thomas, Portland, Kingston, St. Andrew and St. Catherine shortly after the earthquake. Citizens reported disruptions in the use of point of sales machines due to internet connectivity issues across the island. Let's head to the stock market now. Despite the tremor, the JSC reported that trading continued normally and the session closed with the JSC main index losing 1,513 points, while the junior market index declined by 60 points. Among the 34 winners were ISP Finance Services, 138 Student Living, Jamaica Variable Shares, Margaritaville Turks, Jamaica Public Service 7% Shares and T-Tech. The 52 losers were led by JMMB Group 5.5% US dollar shares, Fesco, Productive Business Solutions, US dollar shares, Iron Rock, and Lasco Manufacturing. Now, 23 stocks closed the session at the same price they opened trading this morning.
And the Jamaican dollar gained 52 cents by the end of trading. Banks and cambios are selling the greenback for an average $156.08, coming from $156.60 on Friday, which was the highest rate the Jamaican dollar traded against the greenback since February last year. The Canadian dollar is going for $114.64. $187.14 is the average cost for the pound, while it's costing $167.38 for the euro. And that's it for the Business Day. I'm Javon Keys. Good evening.